installing a new aftermarket radio in a Mini Cooper. If you're thinking about doing a self-install on a Mini Cooper's aftermarket radio because you want an HD radio or you want Sirius XM or you want some other feature that isn't available on the Mini Cooper's stock audio system, don't. <laughs> um, it turns out that in order to install the radio in the new R56 Mini Coopers, um, you have to remove pretty much every bit of the dash in order to get at the radio, and you have to replace some of those bits of dash with new bits. So it's a lot of work, and the cost of having Best Buy or somebody like that do the install is pretty cheap. And I know some of you are saying, oh, Best Buy, I never shop at Best Buy. Well, you know what? Best Buy is not so bad. And the guys that I had to do my stereo were very knowledgeable. And the first time it went in, due to the wiring harness that was sold, it didn't keep its settings between turn on, turn off cycles. And it was very hard to detect because the radio has enough capacitor in it that it would keep the settings for like, 45 minutes, so it was only when you had the car off for more than about an hour that it would lose the settings. So, in any event, in order to do the install, you take out this piece of dash, and if you recognize it, that is the piece of dash that was over here. And so, this is the new radio, and it is a Kenwood. My car's gonna make a whole bunch of noises, but. Poof, okay. So, we've got the new radio in. Because I can change the colors, it is the same color settings as the orange of the dash, which it look, makes it look nice. And it does pretty much everything that I would want. It has Bluetooth integration, so that it will talk to my phone, which apparently I left in the house, so I won't do that demo right now. But it will talk to the phone, it will surf HD radio, apparently the phone is in range that it's doing the downloading of my contacts, so all of my contacts are being sucked into the, to the radio so that I can, you know, do the dial from my directory. Um, the steering wheel it has volume integration so when i click the volume over there the volume goes up and down over here which is nice that was an additional cost but still nice and you end up with this nice you know area underneath the radio to store stuff because this is an adapter that would take a two din so if you really wanted to have some um pop out dvd player on your dash you could i didn't opt for that now, there are a couple of downsides. When you, when you pull out the old radio, this is what you're pulling out. And as you can see, it's a one DIN radio where the CD and the volume control is. And then those audio menus and your miles per gallon features that were up in the speedometer are run by this little box. So when you upgrade, you lose some of those MPG functions and fuel economy functions that you could see here. Now, I can still see them over here. Uh, and there's my miles per gallon, my instantaneous, my temperature's already up there. So. All of the features that you had are available on the mini dial, but the um, but you lose them from up here, which is kind of sad because it was nice to have them up here. Now I'll probably put some sort of mini logo or something like that here to make this a little blank, less blank, and I'll probably get an ODB2 connection screen to drop in to where I used to have some of that functionality, but for now that's what I have but it's kind of worth it because now I have my Bluetooth connection so you know I'm connected to 
my phone that's still sitting in my house and I can, you know, I can play my music, I can do all of those things wirelessly. And then I get an aux in for my Kindle or my iPad or whatever I'm going to plug in and you get a USB connection. Um, and then, like I said, you also get the HD radio. So a lot of functionality in a 200 and I think it was $220 aftermarket Kenwood. And the model number is the, there you go, KDC BT752HD CD receiver with USB interface with Pandora integration, made for iPhone, Bluetooth, Parrot, all of that good fun stuff. And the, the Bluetooth works really well, which is nice because um, when you take a call, it's nice to be not having to fumble with things. And part of the reason that I was doing the upgrade was that the Bluetooth in the Mini Cooper was starting to get flaky. And that's because the Bluetooth in the Mini Cooper actually lives over in this little pedestal that's got this talk button. And because the connection runs underneath the car and such, it just it didn't work well. So there you go. Um, if you're thinking about getting it done, have somebody else do it. It's so much easier. Um, this is the panel that they take they take out um, and they replace it, and you replace it with this $30 panel. So um, the install is $30 for the fascia slash dash bits, which is quite a bit of dash bits for $30, considering what some of the dash kits cost. $220 for the radio, so we're at $250. Um, $50 for the adapter that goes to the steering wheel. Um, $5 for an antenna adapter and $5 for a wiring harness um, and then it was $125 for the install, $65 for the radio and $50 for the steering wheel bits. Um, probably if I had to do it over again I might have actually considered just getting one of the aftermarket um, chrome or carbon fiber steering wheel kits that hides this bit rather than actually doing it. I haven't decided. I haven't tried pulling this off to see. Um, volume control and change channels is nice, but $50 plus $50 installs 100 bucks, and that seemed like a lot of money to be able to push buttons over here. Now, the first time that I died because I pushed buttons over here while going down the road while trying to shift, well, then maybe I would have gotten my $100 back. So, in any event, um, you lose the functionality of the um, ability to con see what your instantaneous fuel economy is and what your miles per gallon is. Uh, you gain the ability to do HD radio, Better Bluetooth integration than what the car had, even though the car had pretty good Bluetooth integration, I have to say, especially for its time. Um, this has better Bluetooth because it's from Parrot. Uh, better iPad, iPhone integration. Um, the ability to play things off of a USB stick or a mass storage device. Uh, a much more convenient aux jack. The old one was down here. Um, the climate controls move down a little bit, which is not a big deal, but it is something to be aware of because it does change the reach. And I have long arms, so it was no big deal for me. But I could see that if you had short arms, that maybe that would put them out of reach if you were a girl. You gain this beautiful key, chain, key tray area, and you keep the area underneath. So overall, I'm really happy with it, um, but I would after seeing the guys at the Best Buy struggle with getting my dash apart, um, I would definitely say don't do this one yourself.